it's September and our thoughts, hearts and hugs go out to all those parents with little ones starting school or maybe bigger ones going back to school. We know it's a tough time. Hi, I'm Lou and Lily Row is off exploring. So going to school, transitions into new classes, new schools, big deal, really big deal. And I've noticed recently a couple of people saying that their little ones or bigger ones are struggling with that. So I thought I would make a quick video offering four evidence-based tips that can really help with that going back to school anxiety. Of course, it is important to remember that every child or person are a unique individual with their own kind of different personality and different sort of way of coping with things. So it is important to find things that work for you, your child, your, your family as a whole. Um, and I would also say that anxiety or being a bit worried about something, fear is a totally normal and valid emotion. You know, if you think of us as adults, you know, the first day you start a new job where you go to a new place, new people, new patterns, new routines, you know, we probably all feel that in our tummy a little bit, that anxiety. So um, anxiety is a normal thing um, and it's important to validate that and recognise that, that there's nothing wrong with a person if they're feeling anxious about, you know, a new situation, a transition. Um, but there are also perhaps things we as parents and caregivers can do to help them as well through it. So let's get into those four tips. So tip one, get a morning dose of nature. There's a growing body of research that shows just how important it is to get out in nature for our bodies and minds, our physical, mental health kind of is rooted in nature connection. So some of that evidence shows how it reduces the stress hormone cortisol in our brain. Um, it also reduces blood pressure um, and enhances a sense of well-being. It improves emotional regulation. It actually has a physical effect on our brain, on our neuroscience. One in particular is that being out, particularly in woodlands, it creates a healthier amygdala, which is a part in the brain that has, um, in, in association with other parts, it's involved in processing of fear. So in terms of those feelings of anxiety, the amygdala is one of the parts of the brain that would be involved with that. So having a healthier amygdala um, is going to be helpful when it comes to kind of regulating anxiety. So when your little one or big one is feeling anxious about starting school or starting a new class, their brain is going into flight or fight mode and it's releasing like stress hormones like cortisol into their brain. So being in nature reduces that um, that, that, that level of, of cortisol um, and it will trigger the what they sometimes call the rest and digest state in the brain which induces a state of well-being and calm. So if you can get a dose of nature in the morning before you go to school that's going to really help your little one's brain be in a calmer state. So if it is possible for you to walk to school particularly if you can walk through some woods or through a park, some green space, even a tree-lined street is going to help with that. I realise that's not always possible for, for people uh, and depending on where they're living. Um, an alternative would be spend some time outside, perhaps in the garden, before you go to school. Why not have your breakfast outside in the garden, have a little picnic breakfast before you go to school and just being in a green space Space is going to help your brain. That in itself is enough but you can even supercharge that even more by using some sensory awakening activities or things like mindfulness also would work um, and so that's literally just encouraging your children to focus on one or more of their senses so for example how many different sounds can you hear right now what's the quietest sound what's the loudest sound that you can hear 
how many different textures can you feel how many different color greens can you feel so it could just be a simple question just to encourage people to tune in to the here and now and what they're experiencing so tip two is to help them through co-regulation so your child hasn't yet got a fully developed brain. In fact, there are bits of the brain, the prefrontal lobes, that don't fully mature until you're in your 20s. So we as adults have much more mature brains, <laughs> in some ways, <laughs> um, that should be able to handle big emotions better than children, just because children are younger and their brains are still connecting. Humans are a social species. We're completely hardwired for connection and neuroscientists have shown this through finding something called mirror neurons so there are pathways in the brain that fire when we watch another person doing something um, and respond as if it was happening to us but slightly less intense um, so for example have you ever watched somebody hurt themselves and winced and almost felt their pain that's because we have mirror neurons so in a way our brain is sort of firing you know if somebody's stubbed their toe um, we're feeling the pathways for stubbing our toe in the brain as we watch it so scientists have kind of uncovered the neural pathways for empathy so what does this mean for us as parents and caregivers? It means that we can use our own emotional state to help the child regulate their own emotions. So if our child is feeling anxious and scared, we need to feel a deep sense of calm and confidence and relaxation because through the mirror neurons that will get kind of conveyed into the child's nervous system. Of course, that might be easier said than done because actually what happens if we are feeling worried, concerned, stressed out, angry, frustrated, we've got 101 things to do, which is all perfectly reasonable to feel those things as a modern parent in a modern world where there is usually hundreds of different things to do. And you know you can't fake emotions it has to be authentic so where does that leave us well it leaves us thinking about ourselves and our own self-care routines and finding a way to soothe and regulate our own emotions uh, in a healthy way so I'm not talking about like numbing out I'm not talking about crashing on the sofa with a tub of Ben and Jerry's binge watching some sort of box set or endlessly scrolling on your phone that's numbing out that's not the same as regulating yourself when we regulate our emotions it means we still feel those painful emotions but we're okay with them they're not overwhelming us so we need systems in our lives to help us process our emotions so that could be our own nature connective practices out in nature it could be things like mindfulness meditation gratitude practices are absolutely awesome and they're also things that can be done in the moment as well that really can help regulate emotions um, so whatever works for you you know it might be having a nice bath and chill out um, whatever works for you and of course these are also things that we might be able to share as practices with our ch children as well things like gratitude in particular can be very easy to convey to quite young children um, just saying you know what are you happy about what are you thankful for um, and that can actually really shift somebody's emotional state if you're feeling stressed out and overwhelmed with parenting in the modern world then I'd really love to talk to you and hear about your experiences you see I've worked with kids my whole career but it wasn't until becoming a parent three years ago that I realized just how sort of misaligned parenting is in the modern day world it doesn't seem to be in alignment with what my instincts tell me what makes a happy childhood and I'm really quite worried about what the future holds for Lily Rowe growing up in this kind of modern society where there's a one-size-fits-all education system there's screens everywhere unavoidable there's a mental health crisis going on climate anxiety the erosion of free play all of these things really worry me about hello Lily Rowe about about raising children um, and you know how to promote the best childhood for for Lily Rowe 
So I'm working on a project that will provide resources to parents to help them feel more connected to their children and to create more peace in their family life, even in the modern day stressful world. And I would love to hear from you if you think you could spare half an hour to 45 minutes of your time to have a chat with me over Zoom. Uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences and also like your needs so that these resources can best serve you. If this resonates with you and you're happy to help me, then please click the link in the description below and that will take you to a short Google survey form where I can then get in touch with you and we can arrange a mutually convenient time to have a quick chat over Zoom. Your help is much appreciated. Tip three is to promote and value play. So children, if they are going to particularly a mainstream school for six hours a day, they're going to have very little opportunity, if any, to play. So it's um, pretty important that you give them some time and space after the school day to be able to do that. So there's a lot of research into play and its value. Um, it increases uh, the happy chemicals in our brains, the opioids. Uh, it also reduces cortisol, which I was mentioning in tip one. Those stress hormones get reduced. And it also has a host of other benefits around um, increasing creativity it, um, if it's physical play of course it has lots of physical benefits physical fitness benefits <laughs> um, as well as things around self-esteem and mental health as well so play is a really good thing so when I say the word play I mean something very specific I mean something that is freely chosen personally directed and intrinsically motivated so for something to be true play it has to be all three of those things so I'm not talking about after school lessons or clubs where you know you might go to dance lessons swimming lessons music lessons um, they're you know they're hobbies they're recreations but they're not true play um, likewise with playing computer games um, that wouldn't fit the definition of all three th things um, people might freely choose to play computer games but they're not able to per um, personally direct them or intrinsically motivate them computer games are laced with external rewards lots of bings and bongs to keep you playing so um, yeah for something to be truly play freely chosen personally directed intrinsically motivated I have got other videos about play if you want to explore that in more depth I'll pop the link in the description below um, but just to kind of highlight this true play sometimes is quite difficult to get to and particularly if your child is older what I've noticed over the years of working with children of all different age groups the older the child the harder it is to get them to a state of true play and get into that state of flow um, and well actually I think it might be to do with our education system as to why that's the case because they're so used to being told what to do and follow instructions and meet a particular end goal and not listen to their own internal um, desires or wants you know rather you know having to tick the box thank you bubs um, for you know whatever the assessment criteria is that actually the state of play gets eroded as the child gets older um, but it is an incredibly important part of humanity in fact I would go as far as saying it is the apex of human um, uh, action you know we want people to play a lot of the geniuses in history were playing when they came up with whatever their piece of art was or their scientific formula we need more people to play so tip four is to show unconditional positive regard so that term unconditional positive regard comes from psychologist Carl Rogers who was like the granddaddy of humanistic psychology um, and anyway it's one of his core conditions for positive change um, but you don't need to know that but you need to know that means just unconditionally accepting the child your child um, regardless of what they do say or act so it's like the it's the opposite if you like to the judgmental rewards and punishments type 
way of working with children. Um, so I recognise that that is often very commonplace and it's certainly very commonplace in schools. So it can sometimes feel like parenting against the grain. Um, but <coughs> in terms of like supporting a child's self-esteem, so if your child is perhaps quieter in school and more anxious, perhaps you want to build their resilience and their self-esteem. And so you do that through unconditional positive regard. So you don't want to be punishing or bribing your child to go to school um, because that is more like coercement or manipulation. Um, so the opposite to that would be to use emotional intelligence, um, sort of emotional literacy skills to talk through things and to try and unroot what the need is behind the emotion. So if they're experiencing anxiety about going to school, it's about trying to unpick at a deeper level what's, what's the need there that's not being met. The, um, perhaps you can uncover and then you're going to be able to help them from a longer term perspective. Sanctions and rewards tend to be very surface level in terms of working with a child um, and therefore they don't they don't work in the long term. They might work in the short term but not in the long term. So if you want to help your child um, manage the, their own emotions, emotionally regulate themselves, you want to uncover the needs so that they're better able to develop their own coping mechanisms moving forward into the future. If this is very new to you and you want to find out more, I have got a video about why we don't praise at Forest School that you might find interesting. So I'll pop the link in the description below. So those are my four tips for helping children with back to school anxiety. Do remember, I'd love to hear from you if you are a parent who is worried about parenting in the modern world and I would love to pick your brains over Zoom. So please do click that link in the description below and that would be most appreciated. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel too so that you can join us in the woods again next time. And thanks for watching. Going back to school can be a big thing. We need strategies that are calming. Feeling big emotions like anxiety can be soothed when we head to the dreams.